In this video, we will prove that NFA and DFA are equivalent to each other. By equivalent, it implies that both NFA and DFA accepts the same set of languages. In other words, we can convert any NFA to DFA and vice versa. The proof presented in this video is taken from this book. This is Introduction to Theory of Computation by Michael Sipser. It is one of my favorite books and I highly recommend to own this book and read it. So let's start. The proof to convert NFA to DFA is already written here. Using this proof, we can take any NFA N and then convert that NFA to an equivalent DFA M. These are our rules. Let's go through those rules one by one. The first rule says that the states of our intended DFA Q bar will be equals to the power set of the states of our input NFA. So this is our NFA in this example and this NFA has three states and those states are Q, 1, 2, 3. So the first rule state that the state of our DFA Q bar will be power set of this set. That means all the subsets of this set and power set has exponential number of uh, subsets because we have three states here. So the power set will have 2 raised to power 3 equals to 8 states. So the power set will have empty set, will have, will have a set containing 1 and set containing 2, uh, set containing 3, uh, set containing 1 and 2, uh, set containing 2 and 3, uh, set containing 1 and 3, and finally a set containing 1, 2 and 3. So if I have not made any mistake, then the the number of states in our intended DFA must be 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes. I can start making a DFA right away with all of those states, but I'm going to use a trick. That means I'm going to start from the start state and will only make states which are reachable via start state because some of those states will never be reachable via start state. So let's find out that what will be the start state of our DFA. So second rules tells us that how to find the start state. It says that the start state of our intended DFA is equals to the epsilon closure of the start state of our input NFA. So what we meant by epsilon closure. So this E is basically an epsilon closure function, which basically consider all of those states which are reachable via epsilon transitions recursively. So here to find our star state of DFA, we have to find epsilon closure of state 1. Let's do that. So according to these rules, Q0 bar will be equal to epsilon closure of state 1. Epsilon closure always have that state itself in it. So my answer will be 1 and all the states I can reach via epsilon transition from 1. So from 1 I can reach via epsilon transition to 3. So it will also include 3. Now we have to see if from 3, I, we can reach via epsilon transition to some other state. And we also have to include that state. 
but in this case we have no epsilon transition at 3 so that's it so this is our new star state of dfa let's start making our dfa via via this star state so here is my star state of dfa now the third rule tells us what will be the final states of our dfa but we will use that rule at the end because first let me make all of those states that i can reach via star state and then we will use this rule later on so let's go to the fourth rule to understand this rule first we must list the set of input symbols for our nfa and dfa nfa and dfa both will have same set of input symbols in this case the set will contain a and b so from each state we have to make transition for both of those input symbols the transition making process contains two steps this is our step number one and this is our step number two that means we have to take epsilon closure in our step number two in step number one we have to create a set where we can go uh, using input a from each of those elements so from one using input a i can't go anywhere from three using input a i can go to one so that means from one and three using input a i go to the set that contain only one so this is my step number one in step number two i have to take epsilon closure of this set epsilon closure of this set will have one and all the states where i can go using epsilon transitions so from one using epsilon transition i can go to three so i will include three in my set so that's it from this state using input symbol a i can go to this state basically both are the same so i will create a self loop on input a the same process i have to repeat again and again now let's do that for input symbol b from state 1 on input symbol b i can go to state 2 from state 3 using input symbol b I cannot go anywhere so that means that from 1 and 3 using input symbol b I can go to state 2 only for the second step I have to take epsilon closure of this result so epsilon closure of this result includes 2 and all the states I can go from 2 via epsilon transitions from 2 I can I can't go anywhere via epsilon transition so that's it so now I can make another state that has a subset containing 2 in it and I go from my star state on input B to this new state I am done with my star state but now I have to repeat the same process with this state let's do that from 2 on input A I can go to 2 itself and using input A I can go to 3 also so that's the result of my first step for the second step i have to take epsilon closure of this set so epsilon closure of this set contains state 2 and 3 and all the states where i can go using epsilon transitions from 2 and 3 from 2 
I cannot go anywhere using epsilon transition. From 3, I can't go anywhere using epsilon transition. So that's it. So I will make another state here that containing a subset having elements 2 and 3 and then on input A I will go to that state. Now I have to repeat this process for input symbol B. From 2 using input symbol B I can reach to state 3. So that's the result of my first step. In the second step, I have to take epsilon closure of this result. So the epsilon closure of this result will have state 3 and nothing else because I can't go anywhere from state 3 using epsilon closure. So this will be the state where I can go uh, with input symbol B. So let's make this state here. I am done with this state because I have treated transition for both of the input symbols A and B. So now let's create transitions for this state. So from 2 via input symbol A, I can go to state 2 and 3. From 3 via input symbol A, I can go to state 1. So that is my result for the first step. But in the second step, I have to take epsilon closure of my result. That means I have to include all the states where I can go via epsilon transitions. And the epsilon closure will also have state 1, 2, 3 in it. Now, from 1, I can go to state 3 using epsilon closure. But state 3 is already here. And from 2, I can't go anywhere using epsilon closure. And from 3, I can't go anywhere via epsilon transition. So that's my result. So that means from this state on input A, I will go to the state that contains a subset having 1, 2, 3 in it. So now for this state, I have to repeat this process for input symbol B. So this uh, last step looks interesting that on 3, on input B, I don't go anywhere. And the epsilon closure of empty set is empty set. So therefore, I have to make a new state here that contain the empty set and I will go to that state on input B. So I'm done with 3 also. And now I have to make transition for this last state. That means the empty state. On empty set state on input A and input B, I will always remain on the same state. So empty state is like a dead state for our DFA. So I will remain here in the empty set when I will get input A and or input B. And we are done with all the states of our DFA. So this here is the final DFA equivalent to this NFA. The only thing left in this DFA is to mark the final states. Every state here that contain 1 will be the final state of our DFA. So this contains 1, so that means this will be our final state of our DFA. And this contains 1, so this will be our final state of our DFA. So in our DFA, we have two final states. And that's it. We have successfully created the whole DFA, which is equivalent to this NFA. So that's it for this video.
maybe we should do an example in the next video so stay tuned